Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're having a lovely day. Today I'd like to go over the evidence that I have that seems to suggest that YouTube is circling the drain and starting to do everything that they can to nickel and dime because they are at the point where they realize they're just not making the platform better and trying to grow it is not going to make it profitable. This is something that you may see on screen when you load a YouTube video. Video player will be blocked after three videos. It looks like you may be using an ad blocker. Video playback will be blocked unless the YouTube is allow listed that just doesn't roll off the tongue. Allow listed or the ad blocker is disabled. Ads allow YouTube to stay free for billions of users worldwide. You can go ad free with YouTube Premium and creators can still get paid from your subscription. Allow YouTube ads or try YouTube Premium. This is part of a global experiment that they appear to be doing to try and urge viewers with ad blockers enabled to allow ads on YouTube or try YouTube Premium. They said that YouTube might disable playback temporarily in extreme cases where viewers continue the use of ad blockers. And this, in my opinion, is the sign of a company that is circling the drain. I've run several successful companies and I've also run several other successful companies into the ground to the point that they were not a successful company anymore. And I kind of have an idea of what this looks like. There's trying to grow the company, trying to get as many people as possible to use your services and figuring out how to make customers happier. There is cutting the fluff on large expenses. And then there's the, oh crap, I'm broke. Let me see if I could find the quarters in this couch so that I can get a Metro card kind of thing. And that's the stage that they appear to be at here. When you are trying to get every single last nickel and dime out of something rather than actually make the products better, you're probably close to the point of failure. Speaking from experience here, again, I run a business where I used to be able to get access to lots of parts. Can't really do that anymore because the manufacturer whose products I service is really trying their best on their route to becoming a $3 trillion company to destroy mine and make sure that I can't get access to anything anymore. Uh, there's a lot of confounding factors there. So, I mean, I'm kind of doing some of the same stuff. I made a community post the other day where I said I used to offer free shipping on everything. Now I don't. I gave my employees credit cards and said, you can buy lunch and gas and all this stuff with them. And I had to kind of cut back on that type of stuff. I can tell the mindset when somebody realizes that their business that once was on the upswing is back on the downswing for whatever reason. And when you take a look at Google's own publicly available documentation, or I should say alphabets here, you can see that this is the case. So when you look at their quarter one 2023 information, you can see that YouTube ad revenue from 2022 to 2023 has gone down a, not like close to $180 million or so here. You have not just YouTube ads going down, but Google advertising in general. Again, that's still a high number, but it was higher last year than it was this year. And this is a trend that appears to be uh, continuing with time over the last year and a year and a half. I don't know how much of this has to do with ad block. I, I'll be honest. I, I, I really do believe that in spite of the fact that my loudest audience members are proud ad block users. And again, I am one of them over here. This is brave browser and I've always got my shields turned on. Look over the shoulder of your average computer user. Look over the shoulder of even your somewhat tech savvy computer user. Most of them are not even using Adblock. I'm not even talking about pie hole on their router or, you know, new pipe or YouTube vents on their phone and stuff like that. I mean, legitimately not using Adblock on their primary desktop browser. This is really alphabet like telling YouTube, you need to search for the pennies in the couch because we're tired of subsidizing this shit. And people like Eli, the computer guy, have been saying for years that they thought that YouTube's business model didn't make sense. When you run the numbers of, again, just how much it costs to run Twitter, which is mostly text, how much money YouTube brings in, and then the split with the creators, like this, it, there really doesn't seem to be that much left over to host video all over the world. And I really think that they're getting to the point of realizing this doesn't actually make any money. Oh, we really, really have to start like racking every single nickel and dime that we can out of the users in order to get money. To be clear, I've never been opposed to paying for YouTube Premium or paying for the platform from a place of I don't want to pay for it. I paid for it for over seven years. I went over that in this video over here where I said why I was not paying anymore. I paid for YouTube Premium for over seven years because I actually liked the service. I enjoyed using YouTube. I thought, you know, again, I can look up, I, there, there, there are complete audiobooks on YouTube, news shows on YouTube, entertainment on YouTube. I could watch The Honeymooners. I could watch episodes of The Honeymooners from 60 years ago on YouTube. There's literally everything I could ever use on here. And it's $10 a month. I could watch it from my home computer without ads. I could watch it on my phone without ads for 10 bucks. I thought that was a pretty good deal. When I was a kid, my parents were arguing over whether or not to pay $40 a month for cable. Cable, you can only watch certain things at certain times. There are ads everywhere after you pay them $40 a month, and you can only watch it at home on your TV. You can watch it on your phone everywhere. This is cheaper than the entertainment that we used to get 25 years ago. It's infinitely better in my opinion. You can get it without ads, and it's 10 bucks a month. 
The reason that I stopped paying is not because I don't think it was worth the value. It's because they went out of their way to make the experience crappier for users that were actually paying them than it would have been for free. I downloaded a bunch of stuff on my phone. I had a phone that was not going to be on the internet. Had a road trip. Downloaded a bunch of stuff. Go on the road trip. Go to play it. Oh, you have to connect to the internet. You've been offline for over 72 hours. I'm sorry. The content that you downloaded is taking up space on your phone. It's still there. It's on your phone storage. You can't watch it until you connect to the internet. I know you thought you downloaded it. You actually didn't. At that point, I said, you know what? You want to play stupid games? Screw you. I'm never paying you again. But if they weren't going out of their way to screw me in that way, which intimately, I'm probably one of the few people that's so petty that I'm actually going to stop paying them the $10 a month because of that. I'm, I just decided to start using new pipe and say, screw you. Uh, but the value that you get is honestly not that bad. I think I differ from my audience members in that because I see a lot of comments in those videos where people were saying things like, yeah, $10 a month is way too much. I spend like five hours a day watching this, but I would never pay $10 a month for that. I think I have different reasons. I'm aggravated because they went out of their way to screw people who were paying for something into having a worse experience. But I really do think I had, I, I kind of had an edge case there. I think a lot of the people that are saying, I would never pay for this, are just people that would never pay regardless of something that provides them value, which is kind of sad. You know, again, I, I'm going to get roasted for this in my own comment section. I realize that. But I pay $40 a month for Bloomberg News. Uh, there was an article on Apple and Qualcomm back then that I found really interesting. And I actually pay them for it. I, I found the reporting on that good. I also find Matt Levine's reporting to be not just informative, but genuinely hysterical when it comes to financial issues. So I enjoy reading that. I know Michael Bloomberg is rich. That provides me value. So I paid for it. When I recover data for a customer, I want them to pay me. When I answer somebody's board repair question, I want them to pay me. When I get somebody's baby pictures back or their wedding photos back from a device, I want them to pay me. It, what makes me feel empowered to ask for money from people when I do repairs is to pay people when they provide value to me. And part of what I wonder here is how much of this actually has to do with people using ad blockers versus pe advertisers just deciding we're just going to cut down on spending. Again, this over here, I, it really doesn't say, like the YouTube ad decline. Is this because people are using ad blockers? Or is this because companies are deciding, hmm, we have to cut expenses. We have a lot of inflation. Expenses are only going to go up. I don't know if a recession is on the horizon. Maybe I should cut my spending. Maybe this pay-per-click advertising that we're putting $30,000 a month into is not actually a good idea. Something that I learned with my own company is that guerrilla marketing works exceptionally well, and pay-per-click Google and Facebook and everything else is horrifically bad. 4% is considered a top-tier conversion rate in e-commerce. Like 4%, that's a top-tier e-commerce rate. And the conversion rates that I was getting was, you know, lower than the error rate in my New York State financial audit. I'm not kidding. I was spending something like six to $12,000 a month at one point, and I would have like three or five people that wrote that it was a Facebook ad or something. That was how they figured out about me. Every single time somebody filled out a little form saying how they heard about me, it was from something that was free. You know, like the way that you get people to use your company, the proper type of guerrilla advertising and marketing, in my opinion, is when somebody shows up to your business and they're really scared, they need this presentation by tomorrow night and they're not going to be able to sleep until they know they have it. I tell them, don't worry, I'll have a few by tomorrow afternoon. They leave. I stay two hours late after closing. I get all their stuff back. I fix the device. I give them a call and I say, hey, we're technically closed, but I stayed an hour late. I got all your stuff back. If you want to come back down, you can come pick it up tonight, see all your data just so you can sleep easy, or I could run it over to you if you're open to paying over the phone before I get there. And when you get there, they see all their stuff is there. They feel relieved. They give you a giant hug and they say, how can I thank you? And I say, two ways. A, you acknowledge Stannis Baratheon as your one true king, and B, you acknowledge Ross and Repair Group as your one true repair shop and never allow a friend to go to the Apple store ever again. And I give them a stack of my business cards. And what they do is they give those cards out to their friends every single time they have a problem. And if one of their friends says, I'm going to the Apple store, they tell them, I'm not your friend anymore because you were supposed to go to Rossman. Okay, I'm being a little overly dramatic there, but that's the type of advertising, in my opinion, that actually works. This pay-per-click bullshit, this I'm putting my stuff up on a billboard, this I'm going to hold you hostage for 30 seconds to play an ad that has no relevance to you, That I don't think that works. Like I think the honest-to-God red pill of the past 50 to 60 years is that that type of advertising doesn't actually work. It's quite expensive for what it is, and it's useless. How many of you, be honest, how many of you have seen a YouTube ad, have seen a pop-up on a website, have seen a 50-second thing play before something showed up on ABC News, have seen a billboard driving down the highway and thought, you know what, I wouldn't have trusted that company, but now I do 
because I saw a 10 second advertisement with cheesy music in the background. Now they have my trust. Now I'm definitely going to go out and purchase their brand instead of somebody else's because I trust that. That advertisement has, it's totally unbiased and it's definitely coming from a trustworthy source, which is the person that's promoting that service. It's like, it's getting paid to. It's like, you know, it's bullshit. I mean, since thir- the age of 13, I have instinctively scrolled past the sponsored results on any search engine or any website. I assume the advertisement is lying BS, and I think most of the country does. I, don't, I genuinely don't believe that most people are buying things and trusting companies and trusting brands based on advertising. And if this trend continues, if this continues to go down and down and down, you bet you're going to see that the companies whose revenue models is based on advertising are, are going to become more and more... Um, aggressive in their ways of trying to get people to pay. And again, as I've said, I am happy to pay. I have always been happy to pay. Stop screwing me. Don't screw me. I wasn't trying to, because somebody made a comment in this video. Lewis, what if you downloaded the entire content of YouTube and then stopped subscribing to premium? Like, really? Really now? Okay. So like, what if I, what if I took out every book from the library and photocopied? It's like, that's, that's not a thing. That's, that, that's not, that's not a thing. That's not what people do. That's, that's like, no. I mean, and if, if somebody was going to scrape using a YouTube downloader, frankly, there are tools for that anyway that don't require you pay for YouTube premium. Um, Olive Branch. Ask the audience, what would make this worth paying 10 or $20 a month for? Again, if they changed the way the download system worked, if I didn't go on a road trip, go to play my video, only to realize that it wouldn't play until I connected to the internet, had I not been paying you and using New Pipe all along, I would have had a perfect road trip, I would still be paying for YouTube Premium right now. I have no problem paying for services. I pay $40 a month for Bloomberg News. God knows how many other things I'm subscribed to because they provide me with value and I actually like them. I have no problem paying creators. I have no problem paying for the infrastructure and I have no problem paying for the ability to consume media from people that I respect. Don't screw me, though. Don't screw me. I'm very curious to hear from all of you. What would it take for you to feel okay paying for YouTube Premium? What would it take for you to not feel like Jorah Mormon from Game of Thrones paying for YouTube Premium? Because that's how I felt, paying for YouTube Premium and realizing that my downloaded content that was taking up space on my phone wasn't working. Because, we, we, again, we have a different idea here at the organization that I'm working at now, Futo. There's a piece of live caption software that I showcased here. And this gentleman is actually going to be coming out with a really cool application that I'm not going to spoil until it's fully released. And the way we're doing it, I, I really hope that this works. So we, we really want to try to create software models that are not abusive. It's open source and it's, it's paid software. We want people to pay. You can download it and there's literally a button in the program. And it says, you know, please pay. And there's actually a button that says, I've already paid. And if you click it on the honor system, it's, it, it will stop asking you to pay. Like it, it's, it's an application that we spent good money on engineers to create. And we are going to give you that application, ask for your money. But if you don't want to pay rather than shove ads in it or, or bother you, it's literally just going to have a little button that says, I already paid. And if you click the, I already paid button, well, that's between you and your God. Okay, maybe that's going a little too far in the lenient direction. We are going to see how that business model works out. We're going to see how that, uh, you know, how, how things go with stuff like that. But when it comes to YouTube Premium, like, what would it take for you to pay for the infrastructure so that they could continue to host everything and have give you a good experience? Like, would would Google have to be more transparent with you about how they are storing and collecting your data? Is there something that Google or YouTube have done? that have aggravated you? If so, what is it? And how could Google or YouTube repent so that you would not feel like a sim for paying them? Is there anything that would make that work for you? Or is this just something that's just not that valuable to you? Or if YouTube went away entirely, it just honestly wouldn't affect you that much. If nobody paid for premium and ad block, everybody had ad block installed and the website went under in three months, they said, screw this, we're turning it off. You just wouldn't care. You go outside and touch grass. I'm very curious to hear from all of you. Uh, and I'm definitely curious to see how this works out over the next few months because again, this is just, this is not the stuff you see a successful company do. I am so sick and tired of hearing people talk constantly about how YouTube just must make money. It is this assumed thing. It is this thing that is taken for granted in spite of the fact that this publicly traded company, Alphabet, has never once bragged about YouTube actually being profitable. 
You'd think if they own this golden goose that was so profitable as a publicly traded company, they want to brag to everybody and tell them how profitable it is, rather than having it lose money for many years, stop reporting that it loses money, and now publicly go through the couches to try to find every single nickel and dime so that they can try to get a Metro card to go to work. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.